Happy holidays everyone, this is B from Kongs R Us, and I got an early Christmas present this year with the Marvel vs. Capcom Arcade 1UP Cap. Check it out, let's unbox it, put it together, and do a full review. <laughs> Let's start with the artwork, which is one of the most beautifully designed arcade 1UP cabs ever produced. Here on the left hand side you have all the Marvel characters. Across the top you have the original Marvel vs. Capcom marquee, which is a lit marquee in this version. Beautifully well lit, colors evenly distributed across the board. On the right hand side you have all the Capcom characters. And again, Marvel vs. Capcom cabs out in the wild varied from cab to cab, so to see this artwork on the arcade 1UP, thumbs up for having this beautifully designed cab with the logo on the front all the different game logos there in the front here as well and then the actual control panel itself was replicating some of the different versions of the arcade version and I love the bezel itself too because they included the original moves list from the Marvel vs Capcom characters and even a little bit across the top on how to play the game so all the little details here make this a beautiful cab really great collection to add into your arcade 1UP collection so this was the $500 Best Buy unit which came with a couple extras this is the stool, a typical arcade one-up stool. It's actually my first. The cushion on this stool is actually way better than some of the other stools that I've gotten, so I uh, was quite impressed with the actual quality of the stool itself. And it also comes with the riser. So the riser is, again, beautifully done as well. Typical riser fits perfectly like a glove. A couple other key features which are different here is on the arcade deck protector itself. This includes the light up deck protector. So a press of a button here changes the different colors that you can see here on the deck protector screen. So that's a nice little touch, not really necessary, but I thought it was cool. And then obviously with this particular version, it has the lit marquee. So those are the different features and highlights for this version of the Marvel vs. Capcom cap. Let's take a look at the control deck, which is super important for any type of fighting game. First off, you have the actual sticks themselves, uh, which are kind of the sandwall style clones that you can change the ball top or a bat top on. It comes with a bat top. I had a ball top on it earlier just because that's my preference. Um, but the joystick itself doesn't feel that great. It is responsive, um, but it could be better. Definitely not sandwall or half quality. And the buttons are absolutely terrible for fighting games. I'll say that much because for fighting games, you really need the, uh, you know, the responsiveness of this. And this is the typical arcade one of buttons. And uh, you know, with this price tag, I know that the original Marvel Super Edition or Special Edition had Sanwa buttons. So it would have been really nice to see them put in better buttons because fighting games rely on it. These buttons actually even hurt when you're doing a special and I'm trying to press the buttons as much as I can. They kind of are sharp on the edges. So I can't move, do this when I'm doing my special, it actually hurts. Uh, and so this is just a sample of my Street Fighter panel, which I actually have installed both Sandwall and um, Industrial Lorenzo IL buttons, half buttons on the right hand side, because I wanted both there. But you can see the difference. This is the stock RK1 up joystick and listen to the sandwall joystick. The, the half switches here and, and the micro switches are just way clickier, more responsive. And then the buttons, again, these have a really long kind of button press to get there. And the sandwalls are really known for having that short tactile response, which you really want for fighting games. So this is why sandwalls, I still think reign supreme in the fighting game circuit. And this is the original kind of arcade style joystick that you would see when you're playing, you know, growing up. And I love, you know, the feel of this bat top versus the one where you can screw on to a sandwall clone. This feels a lot better in my opinion if you're going to be using a bat top and then these buttons also feel very clicky and really awesome if you wanted that uh, responsiveness from a hat button. So that's a good comparison between the original stock buttons and the sandwall buttons which you could replace or hat buttons that you can replace on this side. Let's take a look inside the control panel itself. So after I remove all the screw covers, this reveals all the buttons and the joysticks that are wired up into the encoder itself. So you can see the, the typical RK1 up style buttons uses these Sanwa type connectors, these smaller connectors. So it's very easy to pull out and replace the buttons using these same connectors here. And then the joysticks themselves, even though it has a restrictor gate here, this is a square restrictor gate. So it does give you kind of that eight way clicking motion into the corners there. Um, but one of the things that you might want to replace is the restrictor gate itself to so either a circle or octagon, depends on your preference. Um, but at least the uh, micro switches here are kind of like a Sanwa clone where it actually actually touches the blue micro switches on the inside and not like a lever switch. So that's a really nice thing to see if you don't want to update these joysticks themselves. They work fairly well as sandwall clones, but not the best. I'm going to go over a little bit about some options on what you can do to change out the buttons in the joysticks. 
So you have a lot of options for updating your joysticks and here comes the age old debate about what's better, the Sanwa joystick or the HAP competition joystick or made by Industrious Lorenzo. So if you were growing up in the US, oftentimes you were using this joystick and the controls in the arcade itself. So this is a really steady bat top, the one that you're mostly used to playing. These are the ones that you see in a lot of Japanese arcade machines as well. And so these are the Sanwas, which are actually the clones of what you see here in the arcade one up itself. So you'd have an easier time swapping out this Sanwa uh, joystick into this because it's actually the same size if you were trying to replace it with this this would actually be a lot of work to actually drill out some space here to actually make it fit within the holes you'd have to cut off some of this plastic here to get it to fit without messing up where the button locations are so just in terms of replacing the joysticks themselves you know the, the sand wall probably would be your best bet even though sometimes I prefer using this stick as well you would have to do some work to get it to fit into the hole slot there just like your joysticks, you have a lot of options for replacing your buttons as well. So here's a sandwall style button here with a very short throw, very easy to use, especially during fighting games, super responsive as well. So this is a sandwall style button. This is an IL button here with the micro stitch on the bottom. So when you press it, it's a little bit clicky. Uh, feels really great, super responsive as well. You might've been used to playing with this in the arcades in the US. So this is a really great button as well. This is actually made by IL. You can see by the IL logo there. It's a HAP style that uses the larger micro switches here. Um, so when you're replacing it, this is gonna be the style. The 2.8 millimeter terminal is gonna fit the stock arcade one up. So you would have to be able to uh, modify the stock cables if you're gonna be using this one as all. In terms of actually adding it into the control panel itself, once you remove the arcade one up button, if you're gonna put the sand wall ones in, it's a little bit thicker beyond the hole. So you'd have to take a step bit to drill out a little bit to be able to fit these in. For these uh, half style ones, actually they do fit through the holes a lot easier. So for this style, you would just put it in, screw it in, and then you'd be able to get it there. So it's really up to preference in terms of what you like. I actually prefer the sand wall buttons. We'll probably be doing a saddle wall instead of using the half style buttons. Let's take a look at the back side and the inside of your cab. So the back is just your typical back on an arcade one up with the 12 volt adapter coming out the back. And then on the inside, very some typical things as well. But the biggest key difference about this cab and some of the other online featured cabs is it now has this Wi-Fi adapter antenna that's actually built in going into the PCB. So this is my first online cab. Um, I skipped the NBA Jam cab for myself, but everything else looks the same. Uh, you know, you have the ferrite choke to be able to um, block any interference going into it as well. Um, so this is really cool to see the design of the PCB. We'll open this up just to take a look at it on the inside. But people have asked me, is this modding potential? Is this something that you would mod? And for me right now, since the online play is one of the biggest features, I don't see myself modding it besides adding the buttons, but there is potential in the future if the online play eventually goes away, then I might consider monitoring. But otherwise, the other key difference is it actually came with a Y splitter here um, for both the light up marquee and then the light up deck protector button. So the really cool thing is that they added a custom Y splitter in here. It is not your typical size 12 volt adapter. So this is unique to Arcade 1UP, um, but this is kind of a new device that they included because it has both the light up marquee and then the deck protector here as well. Let's take a closer peek inside the PCB itself. So after removing it, you can see that there's the power for the marquee, the power for the actual cab itself, a micro USB port, the sound, and then the Wi-Fi adapter here. So check out the inside. This is actually very new and interesting to see this type of board in the arcade one up. <clears throat> so this is kind of a new way uh, to see the chip in the board, which is covered by this entire metal plate. Um, so it definitely is running a little bit more of a powerful board than your previous arcade one ups as well. Um, so very interesting to see the inside of it. You don't see actually one of the off on switches, which you see on a lot of other cabs. Even though I didn't have the NBA Jam cab, I did happen to have one of the NBA Jam PCBs. So you can see how the NBA Jam cab was set up here as well and this is with the Wi-Fi adapter coming out of here so even between the two online cabs that RK one up has using very different PCBs and technology so all this points to a one up really you know stepping out of the box and upgrading the internal so that we can have better gameplay um, for a lot of these modern cabs so I'm excited to see that they're upgrading this technology I've not seen this type of PC board in any of the arcade one ups so the online capability of this is super awesome so that's just a good look inside the guts of the PCB 
So when you first boot up your machine, this is the menu selection screen where you're greeted with five different games to select from. So you have your Marvel vs. Capcom, X-Men vs. Street Fighter, Marvel Super Heroes vs. Street Fighter, Marvel Super Heroes, and Marvel Comics War of the Gems. Now the first four games are actually your traditional six button fighting games and War of the Gems just uses two buttons, a jump button and an attack button there. Uh, and this is not actually online capable, but the other four games actually are. So the first thing you gotta do is set up your Wi-Fi connection. So let's go over your Wi-Fi and Ethernet options. So to set up your Wi-Fi, it's very simple. You just go into your settings menu to the network settings screen, and here you'll be able to select your Wi-Fi network. It's only going to pick up the 2.4 gigahertz band, so it doesn't select any of the 5G bands that you might have on your network. Um, but if you want a faster signal, uh, it's not an instruction manual, but if you buy one of these, a micro USB to Ethernet adapter, you can actually plug in Ethernet as well. Check this out. So after plugging in the ethernet adapter, you see a brand new option here where I actually can plug in an ethernet cord to make an, a wired connection. So this is gonna really help your ping rate. Um, so you have the option of a synthetic thing via Wi-Fi, or if you buy that $10 adapter, you can connect via an ethernet port as well. So most people are gonna connect to the Wi-Fi, so I've connected here. Then we're gonna go into the menu settings so that you can see how to connect online. Here you can see I have three bars, which means I have a really good connection. If it's two bars or one bar, that's how you can tell if you have low connection or not. So once you get into a game, you can go ahead and select a game and it'll ask you to play either local where you don't need to play anything online or an online game. And this is where you're gonna see the different options to start playing against other people. The very first time, you're gonna need to start in entering your email address and set up an account. So go ahead and do that and we'll follow along. Once you're connected online, you'll start seeing the leaderboards for all the different games that have the top 10 for the different gameplays. Uh, War of the Gems does not have an online game system here, so everything else does. So you can see your top 10, very familiar names. You can also go into the avatar settings and then update your avatar with all these different cool different options. So you have a lot of Capcom characters, you got your Marvel characters here, some with the name. I love the different options they give you to select your avatar here. Um, but you can only pick the ones that are available. Um, I picked Morgan because my daughter's favorite character is Batgirl, so she's Says. Uh, from there, you can jump into a game itself. When you jump, jump into a game, it's going to ask you again to play either a local game or an online game. So let's go ahead and try online game. Make sure you're connected first, and you can go into Danger Room 1 or 2. Let's see who's online right now. So this is how the matchup system works. So right now you can see what my record is. I'm at 14 wins and 15 losses. So I'm pretty much a 500 type of player. I'm a level three because I've only played for the last couple of days. But here are the people that are playing at the moment. You have lots of different people, uh, a level six versus a level 10, a level 11 versus a level five, a level one versus level eight, level 10 versus level um, eight. So you could actually check and see, you know, the gameplay of people at the similar levels. So join a game that fits your style or at least kind of your level. Uh, and again, and as more people get it, they'll start at level one, and the more you play, you gain experience points and level up that way as well. So you can always create your own room to play. So if you enter any of these rooms, you can just go ahead and create the room itself and be public for anybody to join, or you can set a password if you want one of your friends to join and send them only that password. So once you do that, then you can have other people join your game, or if there's somebody else that just has a single player in there, let's see if somebody else will join me and play. So right now I just created a room and I'm playing on my own until somebody joins me. So you can play pretty much the arcade version of the game on your own while you're waiting for other people to play. So uh, it works really great. The arcade emulation is perfect. It feels really responsive to the touch, no lag or at all. Uh, the only thing you might complain about is since there are no scanline options, it does look very pixelated on the screen. So I have seen that complaint from several folks, uh, but it kind of is a matter of preference. Uh, it does look very bright and the, the monitor itself is the Gen 3 style monitor. So it feels and looks great. Again, I might have preferred having scanline options on here as, a, as an upgrade option, uh, but the emulation itself is very responsive. No lag or anything in terms of the Marvel vs. Capcom game. And this is the game that I'm most familiar with. Um, and it looks like somebody just joined me. So, okay, so that's how it works. If somebody joins your game, you pretty much will leave the game that you're playing and go back into the menu select screen and then go ahead and select somebody. So I don't know what rank he is, uh, but let's go ahead and test this out. So I'm gonna pick my two characters. Um, the other thing I wanted to note, as soon as you show up online, you'll start seeing your ping rates show up here. So you can see right now my ping rate is 32 ms. His ping rate is 32 ms. The lower your ping rate is milliseconds, the better your connection is. So an instruction manual, under 50 is really good. Between 50 and 100 is, is kind of average and above 100 is really bad. Um, 
So again, the online play for being uh, kind of remote and online is really responsive. I was always surprised kind of how quick everything is. There's no lag between playing with folks as far as I can tell. I haven't played with anybody that has really bad connection. Um, so, so far I haven't seen anybody like drop out in the middle of a game uh, unless anybody rage quits, which is a potential um, option for somebody to kind of just quit in the middle of a match. Uh, but normally people play and uh, it's pretty fun as people have different skill levels. Uh, you'll see all sorts of different people playing at different levels and it really depends. You may not know what you're getting when you first join. Somebody could be a level 1 because they just got the cap or they can be pretty decent. So me, I feel like I'm a medium player. So let's go ahead and finish off this match and see how I do. Alright, so I won my first match and then uh, as long as you're still in the room with somebody else, they can keep challenging you over and over again. So there's no kind of set number of matches that you can, uh, you know, keep playing. It's not best out of two or three. You can see that right now my record is one to zero and you can keep playing as long as the other person is there. And then once you're done and ready and outside of the game, there's no kind of other chatting or, or kind of setup features. You just hold down the player one button to be able to exit and that's pretty much how you exit a game. But we'll go ahead and play one more match and then I'll exit out of here, show you some of the other gameplay. Alright, so the Pernit actually left in the middle of the game right now and I don't even think that was a real player because it just said player 1333 so that might have been just a guest account so you actually don't even have to have a uh, an account to play you can play as a guest but I'm not sure if that's going to count towards my, my record so that might have been my first rage quitter that you saw there um, but when you're ready to exit a game you just hold down the uh, player 1 button and then it's going to ask do you want to leave the game just right now and then you can just go ahead and navigate to the leave button and that's it you can get back into your danger room you can even go back into the main menu select your next game and go from there so this is some marvel war the gems gameplay now again this is an snes game here where you can select the character and it's more of a platform type of beat em up than it is a shooting or fighting game so once you're in the menu you can select one of your characters here and then you're pretty much just side scrolling into a game and uh, using the different abilities that you might see in the marvel superheroes game so let's go ahead and play a little bit so you can see what else is on here. So it's interesting to have an SNES game on an arcade cab, but at least you have a couple more options for gameplay value here. But you can do some uh, fighting moves as well, um, but it's just more of your typical Final Fight style arcade than uh, an actual fighting game. So here's a platformer, I'm fighting some Wolverine clones. My jump button is an actual button instead of going up and down. So yeah, this is Marvel's War of the Gems little something simple beat em up might be uh, fun to play occasionally maybe for the kids but not not the best uh, game in my opinion but here's Marvel's War of the Gems here it is that's it another cool feature is if you hold down the actual player one button on any of the games in local mode it'll bring you not only to the exit menu but you can also select game settings and go through the test menu for some of these games as well so this is interesting to see that you have options to change uh, the system you can change the coin mode I actually don't know if it if it does it or not but you have the option there you can check the difficulty level the damage level the timer speed so this is really cool to see that you can access the test menu in the games by going into the uh, you know start menu when you exit um, so this is just another cool thing that they've added into the game where you can mess around with some of the settings this is only available in the local modes of the games not in the online play but it's a very cool feature that they added this into the games themselves so final thoughts on the Marvel vs. Capcom cab. Was it worth it? For me, 500 bucks? Absolutely. Just because I love Marvel vs. Capcom. It was one of my favorite games growing up when I was a teenager. And now I can play it in my home online against other people. And that's fantastic. The online play makes the replay value of this cab so much worth it. Online play for fighting games is what really online play was built about. To be able to get into a match, you know, fight somebody for two to three minutes, get out, play another person. That's what the online community is is really looking for from a fighting game uh, versus, you know, NBA Jam is great, but you could be playing somebody for a long time and it's a longer game. Uh, so for me, fighting genre is perfect for online play. I hope A1UP goes back to does and does Street Fighter, maybe Mortal Kombat, maybe has some upgrades so that you can do online play for fighting games. It makes the replay value so much better. So again, whether you get the full $500 Best Buy version with all the goodies, or if you get the X-Men versus Street Fighter, or maybe the Walmart version at $300 
without that, the online play makes this cab fantastic. So I highly recommend it if you're into fighting games and you're interested in testing it out. I've seen all sorts of newbies from beginners to experienced folks really get into it. And uh, you can still have a fun time playing even if you're not that experienced with it. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this review. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think about this cab if you plan on getting it yourself. And thanks again for watching. Let's take it to the next level. See you next time. Bye.